Fallout Equestria the Chrysalis, Chapter 12, Part 4 Only the last three rooms on the ground floor were still standing, and the partially collapsed roof had rendered all but the last room upstairs impassable. I climbed over the mountain of debris until I could enter the back of what still stood, making my way steadily towards the nearby sounds of gunfire. I crawled through a half-collapsed wall into a debris-strewn bathroom, and then into a bedroom. The door between units had been battered down at some point. I peeked through it, finding myself right next to a closet while a pony at the far end of the room crouched behind a couch, his rifle aiming out the window. The pop of Starlight's lancer firing echoed across the street, and the pony across from me started firing again, putting half a dozen rounds downrange. More guns blazed nearby, both in the neighboring room and from the floor above. I took advantage of the noise to set the demolition charge inside the open closet and back out. The canter back to the wagon was much easier without the extra weight. I hopped over the dead pony and retrieved the final charge, returning to the edge of the fence. The convenience store was much more open. While there was still the occasional bit of broken sky wagon or wall that hadn't really fallen yet, there were enough gaps to make the prospect of crossing the distance twice look very unappealing. From there to the neighboring grocery store, that was much easier. I decided I wouldn't be returning the wagon after that, so I just set the charge down and loaded as many of the grenades as I could into my ammo pouch. Then, I retrieved the explosive, took a deep breath, and galloped to the first piece of cover. I practically slammed against the hulk of the sky wagon as I arrived. I paused there for only just a moment, taking another couple of deep breaths before darting forward again to a low wall. Then, a toppled dumpster filled with debris. I was making the short gallop between the dumpster and an old delivery wagon when a terrifyingly loud snap nearly sent me stumbling. I threw myself to the ground behind it as a hail of return fire answered Dusty's shot. I quickly got to my hooves, taking advantage of the return fire to run to the final gap, myself in the strange position of hoping their fire kept Dusty's head down for just that moment. That convenience store was small. I slipped in the back door, entering a tiny office that led into the store itself. Several ponies were in the front area, taking cover behind the edge of the window and the counter. One lay dead beside the front door, and another was nursing a bleeding leg. One of the ponies noticed the movement and looked my way, and he saw me, then immediately turned back to the window. After all, that's where the danger was. I set the demo charge against the front wall of the office, closest to them, and slipped out the back. There was only one building left, and I was out of bombs. I galloped across the narrow gap into the grocery store's back lot, coming to a halt once I was in the safety once again. The lot itself was cluttered with debris, broken crates, and old equipment. To my surprise, I wasn't really alone. A single pony crouched at the back of the lot, behind a refrigerator, and unlike the others, he was facing away from the service station, scanning over the buildings every pony had just come through. A quick glance confirmed that we were alone, so I moved towards him. Hey! I called out as I neared. How come you're out here? He glanced my way and looked out again. Covering our asses! That gray mare got away, so Storm's got me watching our rear just in case the she shows up. So, they got you stuck out here all on your own? Yeah, he replied, a hint of bitterness to his tone. Not that I don't mind not being shot at, but I'd rather be out front with... I recognized a certain measure of irony as my bullet smashed through the back of his skull. The sharp clack of my pistol echoed faintly across the lot, almost certainly inaudible past the occasional gunshots from within the building. He fell against the fridge and slid down into an awkward heap onto the ground. Pausing behind an old food crate, I retrieved the detonator, arming it once more, and I didn't trigger it just yet though. Instead, I hung onto the strap of my ammo pouch, close to hoof in case I could make use of such a dramatic distraction. The back door of the store lay fallen onto the ground, giving me access to the storage room at its rear. I picked up my way through the room to the door leading into the store and peeked in. Rows of battered shelves left most of the store hidden to me, though there were some scattered gunshots from the front and that told me that there were plenty of ponies there. I could see only two of the occupants, both sitting behind a battered freezer cabinet at the rear of an aisle. One was a larger mare who wore absolutely no barding, but made up for it with her weapon. She wore a battle saddle sporting a minigun, with a chute leading to a large ammo drum opposite of it. Surprisingly, it was the other mare that caught my attention. She wasn't really like the other mercenaries I'd seen. She looked like a member of the Mareford Militia, and my 
My eyes immediately drop to her foreleg, spotting the cloth-covered bulge of a pit buck, and the adrenaline mounted once more. I had no doubts that that little Arcanotech device would consider me to be hostile, destroying any benefit my disguise could provide. I considered my options for just a few seconds, then began to pull out all the grenades I had acquired, setting them all onto the floor beside the door. As I did so, the ponies outside continued talking. Because ammo's expensive, it ain't like we're on a time crunch here. So some civilians might investigate the gunfire. We're not supposed to arrive until after the fucking fight's over. So, you arrive while it's still going on. Big deal. I'm sure Shard knows what she's doing. After seeing your ambush, I'm not so sure of that. The other mare snorted. Hey, no pony expected them to just stomp in Fireline's head and kill his team. None of this shit makes any sense. I missed whatever came next. I had taken a grenade with each hoof, pulled their pins with my teeth, which is not as nearly as easy as you might think, and after a quick glance around the edge of the doorway, threw one, then the other. As soon as the second one had left my hoof, I threw myself down against the wall and flipped the safety onto the detonator, and smashed my hoof against the trigger. It was as if I'd been bucked in the chest. The explosion transcended sound, a terrible, angry wall of presence that smashed into me, even behind the intervening bulk of the building. The world felt disjointed afterwards, almost as if, if I really couldn't tell which way was up or down, and dust filled the air with a dense haze. I had never heard grenades go off. It was just a few seconds before I could even pick myself up, detangle myself from my cloak, and look through the doorway again. The two ponies I had spied upon lay motionless in the smoke and haze. The entire fall wall off the store, closest to the convenience store and its bomb, had, had collapsed, a whole section of the roof coming down with it and giving a view of the sky. Dust choked the air, billowing away from the collapsed area. Past the dust and broken shelves, I could see a few more ponies inside the front of the grocery store, moving away from the destruction. One by one, I picked up a grenade, pulled its pin, and threw it across the store and I could feel every explosion through the sharp bangs, and that just felt somewhat muted and muffled after the tremendous detonation that had proceeded with them. When the last grenade was thrown, I rushed over to the two dead ponies. Green fire erupted from my forehead as I added a horn to my disguise, then used my magic to quickly unbuckle the minigun-equipped battle saddle. I think my reasoning at the time had been that anything which had survived two demolition charges and a dozen grenades would need something truly excessive to put down. I had just pulled the battle saddle free when a dust-caked stallion came staggering out of one of the aisles barely 20 feet away. Maybe I could have bluffed my way further on, or maybe he would have missed that one of the many ponies there had grown a horn, especially with how dazed that he looked and maybe I could have talked my way into a better position and silently removed a few more ponies before things turned loud. But the adrenaline was flowing strong, and I had a minigun. I swung the battle saddle around, shoved my shoulder against the back of the frame to brace it, and squeezed my magic around the bit. The sound had been so terrifying to be on the receiving end, and it was so amazingly overpowering from the other side of the weapon. The battle saddle jerked and bucked back against me as the minigun roared, tearing into everything before it. I didn't aim so much as point it in the general direction and let it loose to do its own thing. I let off the trigger for just a second after squeezing it. Amidst the dust that the minigun had kicked up, I could see the motionless form of the stallion, his side shredded by a dozen bullet wounds. Sharp cracks of gunfire tore through the air, striking shelves in front of me. I dove back behind the freezer cabinet, and someone in the front of the store was firing blindly through the shelves in my direction, so I brought the battle saddle around and answered with a much bigger gun. A single second of fire pulled out a tremendous volume of fire, shredding the vacant display before me, and a couple of aisle shelves finally gave in and collapsed. I let off the trigger, bringing the bucking battle saddle back into control just as a grenade bounced off the remains of the next aisle shelves and onto the ground. I skittered around the cabinet and galloped down the aisle. I was halfway down it when the grenade went off, well behind me. The adrenaline had taken complete control by then, so I rushed forward intending to get to the end of the aisle, turn the corner and hose down any remaining mercenaries. Instead, I got to the corner at the same moment the other pony did. We were only a few feet apart, too close for me to bring my stolen weapon to bear, or for him to aim the assault rifle he held in his teeth. Lacking any better options, and with a fury of adrenaline pumping through me, I dropped my shoulder and rammed him. It went about as well as you would expect. 
My disguised form was light and lean, and though he staggered with the impact, he quickly looped a foreleg around me, twisted, and slammed me down atop a section of fallen roof. I remember just having enough time to be surprised at suddenly looking at the clouds before his weight landed atop me. I had just managed to catch my hoof into the sling of his rifle and pull him down with me. He responded with a swift hoof to the side, knocking the wind right out of me. When that didn't get his rifle free, he lowered his head to his chest, drawing back a moment later with a knife clutched in his teeth. I threw my hooves up at his chest, halting his attack for only just a moment, and he immediately swept with a hoof, shoving one of my much weaker legs away, then moved to do the same with the next, and the knife loomed over me. Fortunately, I had two things going over for me. One, I'm a changeling, and two, fire tends to provoke very visceral reactions. Green fire flashed over me as I tore away my disguise, and the stallion flinched back from my sudden and unexpected immolation. It delayed my imminent stabbing by only just a moment, but that was all I needed as I snapped my head forward, firing a blast of magic from my horn that sent him stumbling and falling backwards. As he fell, I grabbed my rifle and my magic and emptied a magazine at him. At least one round hit, and he didn't really get up again. I scrambled up to my hooves, grabbing the fallen battle saddle with my magic once more. I saw that there were several ponies laid scattered along the front wall of the store, twisted and limp in death. At least two wore Merriford Militia Barding. The store itself, it was already decayed through the centuries of neglect, had been devastated by my assault. Shelves lay twisted and crumpled in the aisles, and the ceiling was drooping and crumbling, as if it might give in and collapse at any moment. It was hard to believe that anything had survived. Another pony stepped out around the counter at the end of the next aisle, and he looked at me in wide-eyed horror, though whether it was my insectoid appearance or the minigun held in the green fire of my magic, I could only guess. I brought my battle saddle around as he dove behind the back counter as I opened up, shredding what remains of the shelving and tearing apart the counter in a barrage of sound and bullets. So emboldened was I with my newfound weapons, and I pushed harder against the back of the battle saddle's frame, advancing towards the counter while firing short bursts of a few dozen rounds each. A grenade arced up, bounced off the remains of the countertop, and laid at my hooves. I leaped back, my wings buzzing frantically as I shot upwards, and the grenade went off, hammering at me with a blast. After all the chaos, uh, after all the explosions, all the adrenaline, I, I felt numb. The pony rose up from the counter, a submachine gun in his teeth. It would have been the perfect follow-up except for, well, one fatal flaw. He didn't really expect an opponent who could fly. He was just looking up when I pressed the battle saddle's frame against my chest and squeezed the firing bit. With enough bullets, even I can hit what I'm shooting at. I kept firing until the minigun ran dry with a jolt, the barrel still spinning as I held the trigger. I floated down, landing into the street just before the grocery store, and my right front leg almost gave out as I landed. A quick glance revealed a thin trickle of blood leaking out from a crack in my carapace. I ignored the wound. I couldn't really feel it, so clearly it couldn't really be that important. Instead, I looked back to the store, panting. Nothing stirred within it. To my left, the demolition charge had completed what the apocalypse and two centuries of decay had started, having finally flattened what was once left of the motel. Closer by, the convenience store had ceased to exist, with chunks of wall and ceiling scattered liberally about the lot it had once occupied. And, across the street from it, three faces stared out from behind the service station's counter. I was an unfamiliar face, an alien creature of unknown intent. My final armor was stripped away. I stood looking back at the wide-eyed, wary expressions of Dusty and Starlight, and the psychotic, blood-caked grin of Sickle. I was completely exposed and out of tricks. My magic flickered out, letting the battle saddle drop noisily to the pavement, and I wavered onto my hooves. Lacking any better options, I gave a weak and uncertain smile, my voice rather small after the storm I had just passed through. Hey guys, 